Right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. Um, and it's a great pleasure uh, to welcome uh, Carlo Messina, the chief executive of Intesa San Paolo, which is one of Europe's largest financial institutions by market capitalization. Um, uh, Carlo is also, uh, he's a 20-year veteran at Intesa San Paolo, uh, but he's also on the board of the uh, Banking Association in Italy and also on the board of Bocconi University as well. So, Carlo, welcome to Oxford. Um, uh, I am Rupert Younger. I am director of Oxford University's Centre for Corporate Reputation. Uh, and we study and research how organisations create, sustain, uh, destroy often, and then sometimes rebuild their reputations. Um, and to my far left is Professor Alan Morrison, uh, who is a professor of law and finance here at the Business School and at Merton College, Oxford. What we're going to do uh, this afternoon is we're going to have a conversation with Carlo about a number of big themes that we think are interesting and um, relevant to the environment, the business environment that we operate in today. Um, and we intend to try and keep our remarks and comments as short as possible to allow opportunities for questions. Um, uh, we will be finishing at one o'clock, uh, so we have just over 35 minutes, I think, to try and do our best on some very large subjects. Um, so, Carlo, perhaps we could start with um, uh, you just explaining um, a little bit about the bank um, cool. and a little bit about uh, uh, your role at the bank and um, just some of the, the sort of background facts mm -hmm. and figures. Okay. So, Inter San Paolo is uh, a company... Uh, with uh, 100,000 uh, employees, uh, so 70,000 in Italy and 30,000 outside of Italy. So we are perceived like Italian, but we are also well diversified uh, in Central Eastern Europe. Uh, and that's part of, uh, of our uh, ability not only to stay in Italy. Uh, the, the company is uh, mainly a wealth management company because uh, we have uh, uh, one trillion euros of wealth from Italian families that is under the responsibility and management of Inter San Paolo. So we are really focused on reputation and trust because when you have one trillion euros of money in, in your country, uh, that's fundamental to, to maintain strong reputation. Uh, we are uh, one of the strongest banks in Europe by capital, liquidity and leverage. Uh, we are assessing uh, the problem of non-performing loans, that is the, the problem of Italian banking sector. We are assessing uh, in a unique way through increasing our recovery. And so with a new business plan, uh, we are uh, giving us uh, the target to become uh, the leading bank also in terms of quality of assets. Uh, we are also focusing, and we are very proud of this point, on corporate social responsibility because uh, uh, in, uh, in the new business plan we are launching a project to become uh, the number one bank uh, in the world in terms of impact financing. So the financing uh, of the categories of, uh, of people that have difficulties in accessing to credit. So we are talking about students, uh, researchers, uh, female imprenditory. Uh, the, the, the startups, so a lot of, of areas in which we, are, we want to invest and we, we decided to, to, to place 250 million euros in terms of capital and 1.2 billion euros in terms of loans financing this activity. Uh, then the bank is uh, uh, really one of the, the most important player in Europe uh, looking at market cap, so looking at uh, at the, 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 the capitalization, so the ability to, to give value to our shareholders, but priority are not only shareholders, but also stakeholders. That's the reason why we are investing so much in corporate social responsibility. Myself, uh, I used to be uh, in different roles in, in the bank, uh, starting from planning and control, then uh, risk management, then chief financial officer, then head of uh, uh, retail networks within, within the bank, uh, then deputy CEO, and then CEO, so all careers is within Inter San Paolo. 
And Intesa itself is a combination of a number of very old Italian banks. Yes, I mean, that's right. Italy <coughs> is host to some of the oldest banking institutions in yes, the world. Yes, and, um, and we are the result of the merging of, uh, of very important banks uh, in Italy. So uh, looking at uh, uh, Ambro Veneto, Cariplo, Banca Commerciale Italiana, San Paolo, Banca Imi. So there are a lot of, of very prestigious brands, very strong banks. And that, so that's the reason why the resulting... Uh, is, is one of the top players in, uh, in Europe. And so that, that's part of, of the story of, of Inter San Paolo. Perfect. Okay, I thought we'd um, talk a bit about the banking sector in Toto before we head back in on Inter San Paolo. And we could maybe start by just taking stock 10 years after the financial crisis. Do you think that the European banking sector is better able to withstand a shock today than it was a decade ago? Um, are banks better capitalized and better able to manage yes, liquidity? Yes, absolutely. So, but, but having, uh, just remembering that the problem in the banking sectors is not capital, uh, could be liquidity or leverage. So uh, you cannot have a collapse of a bank because you have uh, not enough capital. You can have a collapse of a bank and that's uh, that what, what happened only if you enter into a crisis of liquidity and problematic situation towards leverage. That's the reason why it's important uh, the, the attention on capital and today in my view all the banking sector is in a very good shape looking at capital but the, the real point of attention in, in banking sector should be the, the quality of some asset classes. So that's the reason why there is such a, a strong attention from the supervisor on non-performing loans uh, in the case of, of the Italian bank sector. And it is the right approach to have uh, a, a view on, on this part of assets. Uh, in Italy, we have significant uh, collateral, so real estate that is uh, underlying the, these non-performing loans, but it is for sure one of the, the problematic situation in, in the banking sector under solution, under management. There are other items in my view that are uh, to consider when you look at the, 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 the state, of the condition of the, of the banking sector. One is repossessed assets that are mainly in the, in the balance sheet of the Spanish banks that are similar to non-performing loans but are called in a different way because you can repossess and maintain real estate but more or less are similar to real estate non-performing loans. That's an area in which uh, uh, supervisors, in my view, are not concentrated uh, probably too much, but it is, this could be one of the, the next steps in the analysis. The other point is uh, the so-called level two and level three assets, so the derivatives uh, that are mainly in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the ends uh, of uh, uh, French and German banks. Uh, if you consider that uh, level two and level three assets are something like uh, uh, six, more than six trillion euros, uh, so 12 times uh, the amount of non-performing loans uh, in the Italian banking sector or in the European banking sector, I think that this could be the other part of the story in which uh, uh, the, the banking sector need to be in, uh, in, uh, in a mood to be analyzed uh, with more transparency also from the supervisor. But having said that, uh, the, the condition of the banking sector, is my, in my view, is really good today compared to, to a lot of years ago. Um, one of the problems 10 years ago, certainly, was that we had only an incomplete understanding of the shadow banking sector. Yes. I'm talking about the old-fashioned shadow banking sector, so mm -hmm. money market mutual funds, yes. CDOs, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And only an incomplete understanding of precisely what sort of exposures and contingent liabilities uh, insured banks had towards that sector. Mm -hmm. Do you think that problem's been adequately addressed? So, it, it, a portion of this is also under the, 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 the definition of, of level two and level three assets because uh, the, the majority of the investments in this area through structured credit products, through derivatives, through investments in bonds uh, are related with some areas in which you have not underlying a, a real estate like in the non-performing loans. So non-performing loans, you have a problem, but you have a collateral and you can touch the real estate underlying the problem. So, problem, but you have something that you can touch and say, okay, we can lose in making disposal of real estate, but we can, we, we, can, we can have the clear evidence of what is underlying the assets. When you work in, in an area in which there are a, a combination of, of piece of papers that are representing of uh, CDOs of, of, other, of other asset classes, but you cannot touch, 
because it is, it is mainly evaluated to a mark-to-model practice, so you have not a market price, this could be really a problem. And this is part of the story that I told you to say that there are a lot of potential risk. Uh, supervisor told us that there are under absolute control. I think that we need more transparency in order to be sure that this is under control, but it is part of being sure that uh, this part of, of the, 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 the banking sector is completely under control. So transparency is part of the answer. Do you think there's a role for more prescriptive regulation about the sorts of so collateral people can put together on that, what sort that, of skills? I think that, that we need to have more, more rules and transparency in the terms of valuations that are embedded in the balance sheets of the bank. So because you are using a mark-to-model approach, so you have not a price in a page, you could say, uh, bid and offer price. So you need to, 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 to better understand what are the kind of models that banks are using in order to evaluate this asset. And also, if you look at the stress test, stress tests are really concentrated on uh, the, the, the usual asset classes, so non-performing loans, uh, uh, loans, the impact on provisions or loans. But the impact that you can have from a movement of one percentage point in the mark to model, in the model that is under the usage of, uh, of uh, a significant portion of the European banking sector, in my view, is something in which we need to have more transparency. So I'm not saying that uh, there is a wrong approach. I think that we need only to have a, a clear transparency approach. And it is also fundamental for the banking union because there are a lot of, of uh, uh, emphasis on so we cannot have banking unions because we have non-performing loans in Italy, we have uh, governing bonds uh, uh, or public debt in this country and the other country. I think that if you want to go into the, the banking union, what could be really important is also to better understand the degree of transparency in evaluation of level two and level three assets in a significant part of the, of the, of the banking sector in Europe. Maybe we can move on and talk a bit about <clears throat> a sort of more modern type of shadow bank. There's the yes. sort of things that are being created by fintech. So yes. maybe you could just talk in broad terms about what you think the big opportunities and threats from fintech are going to be. So the, the fintech is, is really the, 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 an area that could be strategic and fundamental for the future. So that there's no doubt. Uh, probably you have to, to, to better understand by trying to make uh, a, a, an analysis of, of the, the, the kind of clients that can be impacted because uh, uh, the, the mass market, so the family market for, for a bank like us that is involved in wealth management is an area in which uh, this can have an impact and probably significant impact and you can have competition by Google, other players that can, that can work in this, uh, in this kind of sector with an innovative approach. Uh, probably you can, you can have a, 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 not a significant impact working with uh, affluent private clients that need to have relation with, uh, with a manager looking in the eyes. It is not only uh, working on, on, uh, on a mobile platform or on internet or something like this. So uh, for a wealth management company like Intel San Paolo, we think that we can have an impact, but probably could be limited because the, 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 uh, we come back to trust and reputation. So if you deal with the client in, in, in having a relationship managers that can deal with, with the client is very important. If you have a competition with a big player in, in internet or, or other player, you can have an impact. This could be on, on the mass market in our perception. Uh, the, the possibility to transform, to transform into a, a, an opportunity, not only in a threat, is to make agreement with these big players, or to, to make agreement to reinforce investments uh, in the area of instant payment, that is what we are doing in Inter San Paolo. And in Inter San Paolo, we are also investing in, in venture capital uh, in order to invest into startups uh, that are devoted to, to create uh, new uh, areas of, of fintech. We, we decided to, to put uh, uh, 100 million euros, so we have 100 million euros of venture capital funds investing in startup that can reinforce our ability to, to, to be a player also in, in this area. But for sure, this, this can be really the future of, of a portion of the banking sector. Do you think that the uh, regulatory apparatus is ready for non-traditional 
organizations no, offering no, services? No, they, they are not ready at all. So there is uh, absolutely a, a, a non, uh, a non uh, ability to, to so they, they are talking a lot. So there is a lot of, uh, we, are, we are ready, we want to do, we have to do. In reality, <laughs> the regulation is only focused on banking sector, is only focused to increase uh, uh, regulation for the banking sector. Uh, this, this should be absolutely a priority for, for supervisors and regulators uh, in the next years. Apart from considering something that could be really dangerous in my mind, that is cryptocurrencies or something that is uh, really uh, not... Uh, uh, not so easy to, to handle with, but also all the area need to be under a, a strict regulation. So should these regulations be concerned largely with consumer protection or do you think there are substantial stability concerns too? So I think that first should be consumer protection. So that, that's for sure. So you have to start with the need of people, with the, the protection of people. So that, that's first part of the story, but at the end, uh, stability is a result of, of ability to protect consumer because if you are under a, a, a crisis situation then the crisis situation can, can become a problem of the bank and at the end you go to stability so there are a, a cross linkage between, <laughs> between customers and, uh, and regulation and probably they have to focus more on this point. Okay. You mentioned cryptocurrencies, are yes. they a good or a bad thing? Bad thing. For me, totally bad. So that, that's my opinion. So Why? No, I, I think that if you have something that is uh, only on screen, uh, that you are not uh, under regula regulation, not transparent, so uh, it, it, probably we, we, are, we are looking at this, this situation like a, a, one of the big wealth managers in Europe. So if I, if I need to, to protect my... my uh, my clients, uh, I will never suggest to invest into cryptocurrencies. So that, that's this position. Probably there, are, there can be other, other kind of approach in looking at this problem with more speculative approach, but from my side, it is absolutely negative. Well, and, and, and one sort of follow on, if I may. Um, uh, the, uh, do you think the established banking groups are good at financial innovation, or will it always take these disruptive? new external bodies uh, to come up no, with, so, it, with so real innovation so in finance? Th three years ago, we set, uh, a, 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 within the group, uh, we, we decided to, to, to create an innovation center, investing a lot in, in innovation, because we think that uh, uh, now we have 100 person working in this innovation, in innovation center. And uh, we think that uh, uh, it is important also to have the ability to invest into advanced analytics, uh, uh, so something that can, that can bring culture within the organization, because culture is the future. So it, it is not only because you have one other person working with this, but because you can create uh, the managerial uh, approach of people that then can, can become head of uh, of uh, retail and of corporate. So you, you need to have uh, the, the new way of looking at, at the cultural for the future through the managerial approach. But at the, the same time, you cannot do all by yourself uh, and, and you have also to, to extra so to, to extract value from the relation with university, we have a lot of relation with, with university in Italy working in startup. Uh, and so we think that this could be something that uh, we can also uh, have possibility to, to increase our penetration in this new sector. So I'd like to move it I don't know if we can do also with Oxford. We, 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 can we have to a lot play. of very great we innovation here. Uh, we know. We, uh, I don't know if you, if you want Inter San Paolo to invest also in some startup here, but we can be ready to do so. You'd like you to make a it. commitment now yeah, to no, a fund? No, absolutely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes we I'd have, be delighted. So we have 100 million euros, so we can, we can devote a portion one of this. Million thing. You heard it here you first, know, so, 1 million euros. So prob probably I, I, cannot, I cannot give all in Oxford because Italy otherwise will, ah, Inter San Paolo. But a portion of this, we can use also UK. So I'm going to hold you to that. Yes, I'm going to hold you to that. So, okay. Um, okay. But thank you for the offer. Okay, so. um, uh, I'd like to move it on to the question of the political environment in Europe, because yes. as a major European <coughs> corporate um, operating yes. in this, uh, in a very uh, big global environment, how do you see the um, what can only really be categorised as the rise of nationalism? Uh, 
uh -huh. um, across Europe. Is that good or bad for business? <coughs> so, uh, that's a good point. Uh, being a bank, uh, we are really interested in, in real economy, so not in, in politics. So that, that's, uh, that's a point of view in which we are looking at this situation. So real economy and so the impact on real economy of this kind of condition. But making analysis of, 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 uh, of this nas nationalism, uh, you have also to consider what, what would be the mistake of uh, the European governance. So if you look in Europe, then probably outside of Europe, uh, I don't want to elaborate, but in Europe, uh, it is clear that uh, at European level, uh, the, there have been a, a lot of mistakes in dealing with growth, uh, with uh, security, immigration. So there are a lot of, of mistakes that uh, at, at governance level, uh, uh, we, can, we can see the result of some mix, mistakes. Then if uh, this kind of, uh, of political uh, uh, response or nationalism is within the framework of democracy, ethical values, or something that is positive, uh, what I think is very important is to, to, to try to elaborate what could be the, the answer in terms of the solution of the problematic that are uh, underlying the, the nationalism. So if you look in Italy, we have a lot of uh, e unemployment, especially concentrated in, in the south of Italy. So if you can assess uh, this problematic situation uh, through the, the, this, this uh, approach of looking at nationalism, but, but at the end you can solve the problem, uh, this could be also positive. So it is not negative by definition. It is, it is, it is negative by definition if, if it is uh, uh, not democratic, it is uh, with, uh, with, uh, against the, the, the value of the community. But, but at the end, uh, I think that we have to go to fundamentals. So what could be the actions uh, that you can do in order to solve the problem? And from, from the banking sector, if there are solutions that can increase uh, real economy, and so the, the results of increasing real economy for a bank like us is that we, we can increase the wealth of the family that we can manage, we can increase the, the possibility to give loans to the economy, we can have an improvement in the quality of our credit. So if, if this is the result, it's positive. If the result, uh, if result is uh, a, a reduction in growth or a negative growth, they could be really negative. Of course, the argument um, uh, uh, um, which uh, nationalist parties talk about is that localism is a good thing. Mm -hmm. By getting more localism, mm -hmm. that's how you can bring, for example, the mm -hmm. south of Italy out of poverty. Um, is that a view you subscribe to? So, but, but then again, I think that there is a, a, a phase in these in these movements in which uh, they they find uh, consensus, so they want to become a leader from a political point of view. When they start to manage the organization, you have to look at the kind of actions. So uh, probably the, the initial slogan are, are not the, 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 the one that can be transformed in terms of managerial actions. So, and, and if the managerial actions can be much better than the past, okay, probably it's better not to call nationalism but try to make a positive uh, way of, of calling the, this kind of... But, but the real point is that all the starting point is a mistake in managing situation in case of Europe at European level. So you cannot be only focused on, on uh, uh, reducing uh, debt or uh, try to, 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 to leave a country with a problem of immigration. So at the end, the result is that you have to deal with some situation that are manageable, so action can be, can be can be done, but it is not negative or, or positive just because it is called uh, in, in, in a way. Um, probably an unfair question, but can you put a percentage likelihood on Italy dropping out of the euro? Zero. <laughs> zero. So to, to go out of the, of the euro is zero, absolutely zero. And out and of, the, the, and it is out of the European Union? Zero. Both? So okay. Absolutely. So, so that, that's... Uh, that, that's for sure, and I'm really surprised that out, outside of Italy someone can, can consider that uh, uh, we, can, we, can, we can leave the euro, but also the, the Five Star Movement, uh, the, the Lega, uh, they, they change completely the, the story from, from a starting point. That is why uh, it is something that you, you can create the attention on a movement, and then you transform the attention in something that could be that manageable or not, uh, I don't know, but, but at the end, 
in my view, it is zero by definition. It is the same probability that France and Germany. So Italy is like France and Germany. So you cannot consider Italy like a problematic situation because Italy has a public debt, but has a lot of wealth in the Italian families and also a, a big value of assets within the public uh, uh, own, own public is 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 the the property of of the state is uh, is a value of 600 billion euros of real estate out of debt of two billion two trillion euros. So can can you have a problem in a country in which you have such a significant amount of real estate? The wealth of Italian family is six trillion euros out of a debt of two trillion euros. So Italy is, is like Japan, then France and Germany. I don't think that we are in, in such a negative position compared with France and Germany. The, the export in Italy is growing at a speed that is much higher than France and Germany. So we have the, the best company in, in the export related company. So why Italy can, can leave the Euro, the Eurozone? So I, I think that it is, it is absolutely crazy to think something like that. Then you can say Italy can grow at 0.5, 1, 2 percentage, depending on the kind of action that you can, that you can deliver. But, but Italy is a strong country within a strong framework of Europe. So I'm, I'm completely refusing the, the point of Italy being weak. And, the, and, the, and the, the cross relation with level two and level three asset is just to say that before entering into banking union, and, and I'm, 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 I'm just listening to, to the German guys, the French guys say, oh, okay, but before banking unions, we have to assess the problem of non-performing loans in the Italian system. I think that being an Italian and, and the, my, my, my ability and, and willingness to share the, the, the Italian possibility to sharing the debt of other country is also to be sure that the level two and level three assets of the other uh, European banks are in the safe condition. So I think that, that that's the approach that the country have to, to maintain. Italy is a strong country within a strong Europe, zero probability to leave Europe. Um, uh, I'm guessing the answer to this one is very simple, which is sure. that uh, at the uh, and, and so you think that Britain deciding to leave the European Union uh, was a bad thing. Yes, <laughs> bad thing. <laughs> okay. and, and I big think we mistake. Can leave it at that. So, can leave big it at mistake. That. So that, that's uh, that's. Uh, but you see also on well, the same logic. No, on, but, on but, the same. but also in the negotiation, you see that the, the, the negotiation starting with I'm the strongest one, then probably. In the negotiation, you are not so strong with, with the Europeans. So, in my view, it's, it's a mistake. Then probably in 10 years' time, you can have a benefit. Uh, I don't know, but, but I'm not a macroeconomist. I'm not in a position to say, but, but from a logical point, if you have uh, a lot of, of big international players leaving the country, going to Frankfurt, to Milan, to Paris, what, what's the result? So what, what's, uh, then from, from, for instance, San Paolo, this could be an opportunity because we are not a big player in the UK. We are not so. If uh, a big player will leave UK, probably we can, we can try to have some. And for us, it's diversification. So, but but from 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 a logical point of view, in my view, it is a mistake. Alan, uh, you told Rupert. Um, <laughs> so I, I want to move on to something different and come back to the CSR topic that you raised yes. at the beginning okay. of our session. Um, could you just tell us a little bit about the ISP Fund for Impact and how yes. big it is and what you propose to do with it? Yes, because we started with, with an analysis of, of the need of, of a significant portion of, of our client or prospect clients. So there are a lot of students uh, that, uh, that have difficulties in accessing to credit in order to finance <laughs> studies. There are a lot of researchers that uh, have difficulties in, in having financing in order to, to improve uh, their position, looking at the study and the, the evolution of the, of the study. There are a lot of uh, uh, female that want female uh, possibility to, to have uh, uh, companies that can be, that can be increased. Uh, and there are a lot of startups that need to have money. So we decided to, to have uh, an approach that is, uh, we don't want to have uh, a positive EVA from the starting point of, of this kind of transaction. And we can use uh, a portion of our net income in order to finance uh, uh, a kind of approach that can be positive for the community, having clear that in San Paolo is uh, 
the, the, if you look at the share price of Inter San Paolo, we are the top performer in the last four years in terms of total shareholder return to our shareholders. So we are not saying that we are not taking care of our shareholders. So shareholders are already served with the best performance in the market, 10 billion euros dividend in, in four years' time. But having said that, uh, we think that the company with a significant uh, profitability and an approach that can create a lot of value for shareholders has, has a duty to, to devote a portion of, of this to, to the community, to, to kind of, uh, of sectors that can benefit from this approach. So we decided to put uh, 250 million euros of capital uh, that can sustain 1.2 billion euros of loans uh, in order to, to devote to this part of, of communities that, that are not uh, the bad loans, the future bad loans. Because if you give money to a student, to a researcher, you will have a, a significant possibility to, to, to have back your money. So it is a way of contributing to the growth of, of the community. And we think that uh, having a lot of capital, a lot of strength, we can, we can also become, and if you look figures, uh, to 250 million euros of capital and 1.2 billion is the number one impact bank in the world. So there are no other player in the world that can finance uh, at this level. Then we decided also to, to make something that is to go to the need of people uh, and we are financing 10,000 meals uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Italy per day. So uh, ju just coming to, to people and, and giving food to people, uh, 6,000 uh, uh, in amounts for dormitory bed to, 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 to give shelter to people in the community. So we think that, that for a, an organization, that we are not only a bank, we are, we are an institution. So we think that, uh, that an institution uh, uh, with, with a lot of profitability, a lot of, of, of possibility, uh, has absolutely to take care of this kind. Also, also we are number one in financing the, the circular economy. So we are the, the, the financial partner of the L.M. Carter Foundation for circular economy. So we are, we are the leading partner in this, and we think that this is part of uh, of a story of uh, being one of the corporate knights because uh, Intel San Paolo is within 6,000 listed company, listed company in, in the world. It is among the, the first 100 companies in, in 6,000 listed companies just because we have an approach. But also from a cultural point of view, we are, we are leader in Italy in sustaining arts culture. We, are, we have our museum, we, we sustain La Scala. So we, we, are, we think that this approach uh, is fundamental for an organization that can uh, be not only devoted to shareholders but also to the community and all the stakeholders. Uh, when you engage in this sort of impact lending or impact investment, how do you, how do you measure success? How do you decide whether you succeed? It, it's it's n the number of students, uh, if you look at students, the number of students that can have a degree, the number of students that, that research that can succeed in their, in their approach, start up that can become uh, profitable or, or story of success, uh, having back our money, uh, hopefully, that, that, that's part of the story. It is clear that we are not uh, a, a, we are not the church, so we are not just giving money for, for that, that's that's clear point. But but in any case, if you work with this kind of of, of counterparties, you can be sure that you can create, but you can create also also something that could be special for the community, but also in the impact with the people. So if you if you are able to finance a researcher, you, you have the, the best uh, ambassador for the bank in the future. So, so that's also part of the story that is uh, positive for, for, for the bank. Okay, now I would love to talk on this topic for much longer, but I'm oh, aware okay. of the fact that okay. we're going to overrun. Okay. So could I just ask you to finish by just very briefly telling us what you're most excited about at the moment? The, the, the success of, of Inter, Inter San Paolo today is, is uh, uh, the Italian flag outside of Italy. So that's for sure. So uh, in Italy today, we have no other organization that can have reputation and, and the, the, the strength of, of Inter San Paolo. And we think that this is part of a story of success that could be also motivation for, for 100,000 people that are working with, with Inter San Paolo. So that's part of being the best of Italy, outside of Italy, for, for the community and especially for, for the investors that are giving us a lot of success in terms of, of market cap. Uh, in comparison with the other peers, so thank you. So, do you have a few minutes for questions?
questions? We've probably, yeah. Yeah, we've probably got time for a couple <coughs> of questions. Um, so if anyone would like to ask a question, please put up your hand and we'll try and select. Maybe we'll try and select um, two or three questions at the same time and then see if we can answer them together. So uh, we have two. Um, so if, if you ask your question and then maybe if you ask your question, we'll take them both. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, my question would be, uh, you touched upon it, but the role of banks within the financial services. Because as you see, we have the banks, we have traditionally served like uh, customers from financial needs, but now we have like a much enlarged ecosystem. And you mentioned fintech, you mentioned stuff of big tech, which actually I would like to point out, because these are enlarging even more. I mean, like uh, Professor Morrison talked about ma uh, money market funds. Probably these are the biggest money market funds now. So they are not regulated. Talking about, we can make make a lot of examples like uh, Google or Apple Pay yeah. to mm -hmm. to Amazon Pay. I'm, I'm not even touching the emerging world with WeChat and Alipay and what are they doing in the financial mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. So, which is the role of the banks in this in this in this in this uh, in this new financial services ecosystem? I would say, I mean, like where banks are still centered around products and not customers as mm -hmm. these other peers are, are doing. Mm -hmm. And actually, so my question is, uh, are banks come, becoming the utilities of financial services? And is the payout ratio of 70 or 80% reflects this, that investors are seeing banks as utilities? So that, that's for sure. I think, yes, let's answer that one question. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, several large questions. So that, that's for sure. A, a Banks, uh, the, the very success bank can be considered as uh, a proxy of utility because the other one can be considered problematic uh, situation looking at uh, the, the mood of, uh, of international investors. So if you, if you are able to give uh, uh, dividends and stable net income, you can be considered a utility. But the, the real point uh, in looking to the future of, of the banking sector is uh, the ability to take care of customers, not only to, to, to create products. So that's that the reason why I, I told you that uh, it is important to make a segmentation of clients. So that's uh, the very important point in order to manage uh, this uh, uh, innovation and the future of innovation. Because fintech cannot deal with the same degree of results with clients that are mainly uh, private, personal and affluent. You can deal with the mass market, with the family, with the clients that uh, have no specific need to, to have a, a clear relation with the relationship manager. So you, you have an advantage if you enter into the, the work that is typical of the big uh, retail franchise that are also devoted to, to have wealth management like in San Paolo. So if you want to, to create a wealth management brand, uh, you have to look in the eyes of the clients because they will, not, they will not give you money just because you are uh, Google, Facebook, or, or uh, if you have not a, a Google relationship manager that can work with you and in which you can, you can trust and, and, be, and be in a position to say, okay, I'm giving money to, to a person on which uh, I, I think that I can rely. So that, that's really the, the, the differential point. If you want to concentrate only on payment products, probably more difficult other products in my view there will be no f future. For payment products and especially mass market, uh, they can be really competitors and in the future they can become uh, a threat for, for the banking sector. The only point is to try to make agreement with them. So try to, to make a combination of work. But, but do not forget that uh, for a significant portion of, uh, of the banking business model devoted to wealth management, it is very difficult uh, that uh, a, a Google, Facebook or other player can become the leading player in managing money for, for the people. One more here. Um, Carlo, thanks for coming in. Um, with your insights into MPLs in Italy, is the Italian real economy strong enough to cope with German-led ECB tightening? So, starting from, from non-performing loans, because it is true we have a, 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 an ability to, to, to view and understand the non-performing loans that is unique. And, and looking at this point, uh, I have to tell you that the risk embedded in non-performing loans uh, is only timing of recovery in Italy. 
then we, we can enter into the impact coming from tapering of ECB. But the time of recovery is something that is related with the judicial <laughs> framework in Italy because you, you ta it takes more than five, seven years time in order to recover your underlying assets, uh, underlying the non-performing loans. So, but non-performing loans in Italy, if you look at the net figures uh, and then you look and you compare with the value of the real estate underlying the net non-performing loans value, it is more or less the same level. So in the medium term, risk is, is quite close to zero. I'm talking about seven, ten years time. If you look at the, at the, the, the position of, of the, the ECB that want the money to be recovered in two, three years' time, you can have a problem of timing of recovery. That, that's a problem in Italy. So looking at the, the possibility of a, a reduction of the quantitative easing in, in our country, the, the, the most important problem could be related not with non-performing loans, but with uh, uh, the financing of the public debt in the country. But at the same time, uh, I have to tell you that uh, sustainability of, of the debt is significant because the average duration is more or less seven years. So you will not have a problem in a, in a significant way also with the reduction of, of the quantitative easing because uh, the, the sustainability in these uh, last four years through the, the pension reform and the ability of the people uh, uh, working uh, with the financing of the debt to, to increase the duration of the debt uh, is that uh, I think that we can have an impact but not so significant. Um, before we say thank you to Carlo, um, uh, I've just got one little final thing which I'm delighted to be able to do this just today. Um, uh, Carlo uh, has been admitted as a visiting fellow at the University of Oxford. And so I'm uh, delighted today to be able to present our <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so thank you to all of you for coming. Thank you to the other room, uh, which I know is the overflow room. Uh, thank you very much for you as well. Thank you very much, Carlo and Alan. Thank you.